Welcome to God, Sex, and You, a daily discipleship podcast on healthy sexuality. Here's your host, Purity Pastor, Dustin Daniels. The English word chivalry comes from the old French word chevalry error. Its origin comes from medieval times and was the code of conduct required for knights. And when we think of chivalry, we think of a man's courtesy towards a woman, don't we? When it comes to biblical chivalry, the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. While God created men and women to be equal, He also placed deep within the heart of a man a unique desire, a godly willingness to guard and to protect women. Now, that statement will infuriate the women's liberation movement, I'm sure, but regardless, the reality is that God created men and women equally but differently. In other words, men and women have different functions that complement one another. We're not to compete with one another. Part of a man's duty is, is demonstrated through chivalry. By holding doors and helping with coats, how about rising? A man standing when a woman enters the room. Man, I just think that God smiles when a man honors female beauty. Well, today we continue our series on how to raise your boys and turn them into godly men, a chivalrous man. Dr. Mike Fabares is my guest, and we're discussing his latest book, Raising Men, Not Boys, Shepherding Your Sons to Be Men of God. In today's podcast, we're going to discuss several things. Number one, the importance of modesty. Number two, the physiological nature of the male brain. And number three, do we as parents have a willingness to answer these questions about sexuality? Today's show is titled, Is Chivalry Dead or Has It Just Taken a Black Eye? One of the aspects that you talk about, Mike, is the importance of modesty. As church people, I guess, people say, oh, you guys are just so prudish and, you know, those, those kind of things. But why is modesty so important? Well, modesty is important because particularly guys, as I know, this is no revelation. We're such visual creatures, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can put a woman in front of us. It's, uh, you know, dressed appropriately and then put another one who's got a low cut blouse and her cleavage is in, in our face. And, you know, it's, it does something to the physiology of our brain. So we have to have modesty in our world. And, and you know, certainly the Church of Christ needs to be modest. Doesn't mean we need to be dressed like pioneer you know, people, but it does mean that we're not, you know, the stumbling block for people in our in our world, in our society, and certainly not for our brothers in Christ that are growing up trying to be pure in their thought life. So, you know, obviously we talk about modesty, though this is a book for raising uh, boys, I do want them to recognize that modesty, uh, that they are going to value as a, as a basic value of the Christian life, uh, it has to be something that we, you know, hold up as important. And, and when they have that talk in the youth group or the youth pastor talks about it, you know, I want them to go, yeah, that's right. That's, that's appropriate because our sexual organs, the sexual arousal that we have just by looking at someone's body, especially for us as guys, that's a kind of thing that needs to be given its proper context in marriage as the song of Solomon rightly, you know, says, Hey, have at it. Great. He, he admires the, the, the naked form of his wife and she does his, and all of that takes place in the proper context. But for now, when we interact with people, as God did in Genesis 3, we clothe our bodies, we cover our bodies, and we make sure that we present ourselves modestly, as the Bible repeatedly tells us to. So I want to make sure that we talk about modesty, even though it's not the guy generally who's 15 that needs to make sure he's, you know, got it long sleeves on or, you know, whatever, sure, or sure. doesn't wear his, his, his muscle shirt to church. You know, he just <laughs> needs to realize that it's the, the value of modesty across the board, particularly with our young women, that we need to, to value highly. You also talk about the, the willingness to answer these questions when you're having the sex talk with our boys. Mm. Um, we we kind of touched on that. Can you expand on that a little a little more? Any further thoughts? Yeah, you know, it's just a hard thing for us, and I particularly as dads, I, I just think it's hard for us to have these discussions. We put them off. We don't want to talk about them. It's hard. It's embarrassing for us. And and I just think, 
you've got to realize your, your kid has curiosities. They have misinformation in their minds. We've got to learn to love our kids enough to be uncomfortable for them. And, and that conversation is an uncomfortable thing. There are men probably listening to this broadcast right now. You know, they've got eight year old, you know, children. They know mm -hmm. that they've got a lot of misinformation and they need to just go home, make the decision. I'm going to have an hour conversation. We're going to drive down to Denny's. I'm going to sit down and we're going to talk about this. That has to happen, even though it's the most uncomfortable thing you could ask a lot of men to do. My, my daughter, I remember when she was in uh, elementary school, uh, you know, I just can't imagine being in a bus full of kids and I'm not real good with little <laughs> kids. And she said, dad, would you be, you know, uh, the dad sponsor and go on this field trip at our, uh, for our class, mm. you know, to the Ronald Reagan library or whatever, we, wherever we were going. And I, I was like, oh man. Um, okay, honey. And I agreed to do it. I hated really every minute of it, but I love my daughter. And sure. I realized that I, I can be uncomfortable for my daughter. I can do this because I love her, even though I'm way out of my element and feeling, you know, ridiculous as a guy who's trying to have conversations with, with, you know, nine-year-olds. So I'm just telling you, listen, let's be a man as dads and be manly enough to say to our kids, listen, let's talk about what you know about sex. Let's talk about what you know about words. I just remember sitting down with my little kids and I'd say to my boys, give me words you've heard. You know they're bad words, but you have no idea what they mean. Oh, Let's that's talk a great about exercise. It. You know, and I, and I just let, I, and they were just there, really? I said, yeah. And just for our conversation, if you have to spell the words, spell the words. You know, we don't allow any cursing but in our home, but now's the time for you to use those words and just let's talk about what they mean. And just to have that open conversation, but it takes a dad who's going to take the initiative and be uncomfortable and sweat a little bit and blush a little bit and, and have the conversation to straighten out those confusions and kind of give your kids uh, the, the, the straight scoop on the curiosities that they carry around in their young minds. You talk about chivalry in your book and uh, is chivalry dead or does it have to, to be dead, Mike? Yeah, well, you know, it, it's, it's certainly taken a, a black eye in the last generation. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I want my kids to know that women are a special creation of God. And certainly as we raise young men, I, I want them to know, listen, for you to treat them with a special kind of respect is honoring to God. God has given you an opportunity to see the most special creation that he's made. In, in, and that is after it was all done, he said, oh, one more. And this one's special. I'm going to create mm. the female. And, and I want them to see that. You know, girls aren't icky and gross. They don't have cooties. They're special creations of God. And while that may be hard for them to put into any kind of practical application as they go around their elementary school, I do want them when they come home and we go down to, you know, Target or whatever, hey, you're going to open the door for that lady just because she's a lady. Hey, you're going to pick that up off the ground that she dropped just because she's a female and you're going to treat her with a special kind of respect. You know, that that statement from Peter in 1 Peter 3 about uh, women and, and God basically threatening men to say, hey, your prayers aren't going to be answered if you don't treat them in a special way right, yeah. is, a, is a passage that I think a lot of people, uh, women in particular, have taken offense to because it talks about the weaker vessel. Well, that, that's not saying, hey, they can't bench press what we can. The idea, and even that Greek term, which you probably heard in a sermon at one time, has a sense of like a, 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 like a crafted piece of uh, pottery, a vase that you would set up on a pedestal and you'd put over the mantle in your home or something, that concept of something very special. And, and the point is they're a, a more delicate, uh, to be valued, to be set on a pedestal kind of people. And, and, and God is saying this thing that we call females, this person, this, this aspect of creation, you need to treat it with a special kind of dignity and respect. So that kind of ladies first, open the door, show them a special kind of thoughtfulness and, and civility. That's what I'm trying to develop in my boys, not just so that they can have a woman say, oh, you sure are a fine young man, but so that God can say, okay, you're, you're valuing the order of things that I made the way I expected it to be valued because the Bible says we ought to value it that way. So men need to learn from the earliest of ages that they need to see women as a special creation of God that needs our and, and deserves our, our extra kindness and understanding and, and, and politeness. And that needs to start young and it needs to be modeled by dad. You list three practical steps, Mike, to, to parent your son in and about sexuality. We've talked about a modeling, a healthy marriage. Talk now about how to use these electronic aids to accountability is what you call it. I, I guess that's protection from pornography. Is that what you're referring to there? 
Yeah, you know, we live in a really difficult day to guard our kids from stuff that can really, uh, you know, start to define sex for them. And and these electronic gizmos and gadgets that we have, uh, we've got to realize, you know, they're, they're dangerous. And and I'm I'm you know I live in the technological world. I live in Orange County, California. I, I my kids had phones, and I'm not the kind of luddite that says, hey, you know, you shouldn't have any of that stuff. <laughs> but I am telling you, you've got to put some strict you know, guidelines on all of this. You mm-hmm. have to realize that you got to be a step ahead of your kids. And that's hard to do because there are apps and stuff. I had no idea, you know, what these apps could or, or, or are used for. You just and can't keep up anymore. It's, I, it's I can't crazy. keep up, Yeah, but I can read about it. And I tried mm-hmm. to read about it when my kids were young in particular. And in my home, I would say, I got to know what's going on here. And, and even if I can't stay ahead of it all, Here's what I am going to say. Listen, no closed doors with your phone. You're not taking into the bathroom. Uh, you know, you're not going to have a computer in your room. I'm all for you having a computer and we'll put one in this open area in our house. Uh, there's nothing on your phone uh, that I'm not going to see. That's what I tell my kids. There's nothing on your phone uh, that's going to be locked or private. And then, of course, you know, they, they put these apps together that would make things disappear. And so Snapchat and all the rest, I had to get a little braver and bolder about those kinds of things. But you, you've got to try and help them recognize that, uh, you know, you can you, you have a, a curiosity and a, and a passion that can lead you into places that will do nothing but enslave you. So I'm going to try to be honest about the fact that I'm trying to keep you from stuff that will damage your, your mind. And uh, I want to do the best I can with these electronic fences. And, and then I want to also know, it's never bulletproof. And I want to have those conversations mm-hmm. as I do periodically. As my kids were in my house, my boys, I would say, you know, just what's going on in terms of pornography in your life? What's happening? Where have you failed? Give me some information about what's happening in, in, in the areas of these, uh, these electronics. And thankfully, I had the kind of relationship with my boys where they would fess up and I would remind them, listen, there's a lot of stuff you can get away with that I'll never know about. But as I quote in the book, Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. And because of that, I need you to have a fear of God and, and recognize that. And it's been great to have my boys, you know, be honest enough just to even think on themselves and say, Dad, you know, I need to tell you what's happened here. And that's great. That's that's the kind of relationship you'd like to have with Absolutely. your your sons. Mm-hmm. But you've got to help them. I think your television, I mean, from the time we had television, you know, and again, I'm not trying to set up uh, some kind of man-made rules for all of this, but I've said, listen, why would I have channels, pay channels in my house that can get this kind of stuff to my kids? You know, they're going to be home by themselves. I, I just, I've never paid for those kind of channels. And we're all about having, you know, the basic channels and the news and the sports and all of that, but I'm just not going to put extra opportunities in my home for those kinds of things. Now, I know the phones are far worse than your cable lineup, but I am saying, You've got to look and wisely practice in your home the kinds of things that let your kids know, hey, mom and dad are very serious about us staying away from pornography, and uh, they warn us about it. They try to keep us accountable for it. They try to make sure we're not alone and and private in in places where I'm going to, you know, indulge in this stuff. They're all going to stumble upon it. But, you know, you you just you want to keep them from that uh, enslaving appetite to it and for it. Wise words from my guest today, Dr. Mike Fabares. We're discussing his new book titled Raising Men, Not Boys, Shepherding Your Sons to Be Men of God. And, you know, we do want to keep our sons away from anything that creates a hunger and thirst for the ungodly things of the world. Pornography is, is one of the most pervasive and evil of those things. So if you and your children do not have a filtering system on your digital devices, I would strongly encourage you to get one installed today. Uh, To not do this, in my opinion, is child abuse. So if you need a suggestion on this, look at Covenant Eyes. You can go to CovenantEyes.com. And if you use my full name in the promo box, you'll receive a 30-day free trial. Tomorrow, we'll continue our conversation with Mike Fabares as we wrap up our series as we discuss how to respond to your son's sins. Lastly, in this Christmas season, the season of giving, if God nudges you to make a year-end donation to a ministry or organization, I would pray that you would consider God's sex in you. We are a 501c3, so everything is tax deductible. would love for you to become a purity partner with us at a dollar a day. That goes a very long way with us. 
We're actually reaching 80 countries around the world, and we're praying to reach the other 80 plus uh, for 2018, and we could really use your help to do so. You can become a Purity Partner for only a dollar a day. You can do that by visiting DustinDaniels.org backslash give. And while you're on the website, click on store and you can find yourself some great reading material as well. Well, thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and You. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Purity Pastor. You can email me your questions on the website. Once again, DustinDaniels.org. Jesus says that we are blessed when we are pure in heart. You know, that's the only beatitude that comes with a promise. And the promise is that we're going to see God. Oh, my goodness. What a glorious day that will be, my friend. Well, walk worthy today as you cling to Jesus. I love you, and I look forward to our time again tomorrow. 